the rules, yeah? <laughs> hey, funny guys. Quiet on set. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Just remember the rules, yeah? <laughs> hey, funny guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much for doing this for us uh, and welcome to all the interviews. <laughs> no. Um, could you please also introduce yourselves uh, and tell us a little, about, a little bit about who you are, what you do, uh, what your position is in the team? Sure. Okay. Well, my name is Andrew Bryant. Andy Bryant in the team, and uh, yeah, I started football. Uh, I suppose quite late, really. I went blind when I was four. Uh, could see perfectly up until then. Then I went to uh, uh, the same uh, the same school as our captain, actually Simon Hill, um, and uh, we played quite a lot of uh, blind football there. I mean, my team was called the Lady Madonnas. That was quite good, um, and uh, yeah, so we had a good. Good, uh, good lot of football there, but then uh, the sports teacher at our school um, said to me, "Would I be interested in going over to train with the um, train with the England coach?" Uh, and to be honest, it, 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 it was a it was an amazing day. I mean, to be honest, it seems like yesterday. Uh, just remembering what was happening then, I was just so happy. Um, and that was when I was 17. I'm significantly older than that now. Um, 26. So yeah, I started training with the England coach uh, Tony Larkin, as was then. Uh, so uh, and then I went to Beijing uh, in 2008. And then after that, I wanted to concentrate on my studies for a bit. So I left the football scene for a while, but I'm coming back into it now. My name is Bogdan Miku. I'm a Romanian student from University of Worcester. I'm going in my third year in September 2013. Uh, I started football since I was seven, um, came to England in 2011 to start a university and had the opportunity to meet uh, David Mykoff who got me into disability football and since then I'm, uh, I'm getting involved in this sport. Yes, originally I'm from Romania. What about the situation in Romania? Is there a balance of the team? Is there a Unfortunately, the the sport of disability football it's, uh, it's it doesn't exist in there. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't even know what it is disability football until one year ago when I got involved with it, and uh, it was like a, a first uh, first sight love with, for me to work with disabled footballers and have the opportunity to um, to to do something for them and to to improve the sport. Sorry, um, about the communication on, on uh, which one, how it works. Uh, uh, well, basically, you just need to keep talking, let everybody else on the pitch know exactly where you are, because if you don't, then you're going to get accidents, um, you know. So, yeah, you get people crashing into each other and then, you know, you, you just wandering around the pitch, you know, not even knowing who you are and, you know, just like losing the sky with diamonds is ridiculous. So, um, yeah, you just need to be really careful and uh, talk all the time because then you can actually get some strategy going. As an, as an assistant coach, I, um, I had a big opportunity to work with professionals and learn from uh, Ross, who's an uh, analyst for, for the GB team, and from David, who trained GB, the GB team for a couple of years. And I, I learned from them how, how accurate you have to be when you, when you coach disabled footballers during a game. Every, every information has to be 100% accurate. The timing has to be uh, set up proper in order for them to to do the effective, the effective technique at the right time, so you can score the goal, pass the, uh, pass it into the, do the right decision to pass, and so on and so on. So, being on, uh, being around on the pitch, um, as you can <coughs> could see during the tournament, involves a lot of excitement. It's it's hard because you you have the desire to get in there and do the pass by yourself, but um, you have to get get yourself together, focus and. Um, offer the best information for the players so they can do it so they can do it because they're the only ones who, who have the power to to do something in a game this, uh, i don't know 
but in my opinion this must be really draining for the players. It's, it's very physical, the game is very physical, you've been running like forever, um, but also like uh, it's your men mentally and psychologically, like you're listening, you're talking, you're running. Um, yeah, but if, if you think about it, it's exactly the same for sighted players really. Um, it's just that obviously all of the communication is going on in, you know, over the, the hearing. Um, you know, you, you can't glance around and see where other people are. But, I mean, even when you're a sighted player, then you'll be listening for people calling you when you're not looking at them. So, you know, it, it's just, it, it's the same as sighted football, but it's just much, much more important to, uh, to get, the, get the communication in. You know, so uh, yeah, that's that's a very big thing, very big. Uh, you know, it, it, so if you play it often enough, uh, then you just get used to that. You know, if you if your fitness levels are high enough, and you you know if you're fit, then you can concentrate for longer, and you don't fatigue as quickly. So you know, it's the same as very very similar to sighted football in that respect. Because I imagine it to be much harder. Like for me, all all the, the voices, I don't even know how you how you can hear who is who. But but I guess it's just practice. And well, just experience. obviously you'd, you'd you'd experience it differently if you'd been blind for as long as all the players on our team. You see, because you obviously learn to function a different way. Um, I think that's fair to say. I think they'd all agree with me. So yeah. yeah. And as a coach as well, as a coach as well, it's very important to know how to delimitate your zone. Um, which, to be honest, I didn't do this tournament. Um, it was my first international tournament. I got inside a couple of times. However, the players didn't respond negatively to my um, to my emotional state. And um, the way they process the information is very important during a game. So you have to know when to stop talking, when to start talking, and how kind of information you should offer. Keep it simple, not not be too complex. Otherwise, they won't process it even if you say it. So all these factors are influencing the game uh, in, a, in a vital manner. And I guess there are many different ways of, of coaching. We've seen, I mean, again, I'm a totally layman, but I've seen different levels and approaches of coaching. Uh, I, I, I guess everyone is, every coach was emotional, but the, still I felt there was a difference in, in the way the communication worked between players and, and outside. I don't there, know how you see. there are different styles of coaching. Uh, coaching is such a broad area that it's more more likely to be objective. So everyone will respect the principles of coaching. However, we're gonna do it in the the, the only way. Like um, uh, like Francis Nada says, uh, I'm gonna do it my way. This is the way of this is the the, the main uh, idea in coaching. You respect some principles, but you do it in the way that you think is better for your team because every team differs, every team has particular features, so you're never gonna manage to coach a team in, a, in, a, in a, two teams in the same way. That's not gonna happen, because you have different players, different medical conditions, um, particular, particular preferences for each player. So you have to take all these into consideration when you coach. You can't, you can't just go there and, and think about yourself, because that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna be effective for them. You have to you have to get uh, under their skin, you have to feel them, feel the way they feel before a game, during a tournament, uh, ask for their needs, communicate with them, and meet the needs of the team. If you don't do that, there's not gonna, uh, the, the, the win, the success, will not gonna come, definitely, for sure. What do you feel about this one? Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, uh, obviously, I've, I've had a number of different coaches over my uh, footballing time, um, and I think, to be perfectly honest, it, it really does, because uh, a lot of the time you get coaches that have always coached sighted football. So I think to a very large degree, um, a coach that is coming into the blind game, uh, you know, afresh, you've never done it before, then they really need to be able to imagine, really, because they need to put themselves in the player's mind, you know, to understand what you know what, how how they experience the match, you know, and then they can talk to them on that on on, on you know understanding that really. Um, but what I what I've learned over the time I've played football is that football is a 
brilliant way of bringing people together, of raising people up. Um, you know, just so generally, I mean, all you need is love for football to just rise up and con you know continue and to improve. Because obviously, if you don't have that love, then you know you can't bring all those people together. I mean, that I, football is a massive part of my life; always has been. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's as simple as that. I mean, there's a lot of very complicated stuff to talk about in football, but if you love the game and you are prepared to give the time to it and people listen to other people and understand what their difficulties are and want to coach them through that, then, you know, that, that's important. You know, it's all about people. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 He's nice. He's very nice. He's nice. He yeah. I didn't even talk about moustache man with Sergeant Pefferdom. <laughs> Oh, I've got a few. I've got a few. Yeah, Lady Madonna's. Come on, Lily. Lady Madonna. We were fucking awesome. I tell you what, I might carry on. I tell you what, I might carry on.